In the previous video, we applied a motion capture clip to our zombie's newly solved face rig and then tuned his mouth area. In this video, we'll go further with tuning by adjusting the envelope weights and the deform regions, as well as painting a wrinkle map. As we've seen in previous videos, Face Robot uses a soft tissue solver to deform the face. This solver is driven by two types of operators working together the standard soft image envelope operator and special face robot deform operators. The envelope operator acts as a base foundation and binds the skin to its deformers. The deform operators, in contrast, are layered on top of the envelope. Their purpose is to drive specific regions of the face to simulate soft tissue compression, which results in shaping realistic facial expressions. When you create facial expressions by moving the different animation controls around, you're actually controlling these two types of operators. So the bulk of the tuning process consists of adjusting the deform regions and the base envelope deformers. Let's start with the envelope. The main job of the envelope deformers is to maintain a smooth skin that complements each of the deform regions. For the most part, the envelope doesn't require a lot of tuning unless you notice skin pinching caused by some conflicting deform operations, usually in a high resolution mesh. That being said, there are a few areas that you should make sure to weight properly because they're not handled by the deform regions. The back of the head, the ears, and the tip of the nose. On the Maps tab, select Envelope Weight Paint. In this mode, a new batch of little nulls appear around the head. These are the envelope deformers to which the vertices of the head mesh are weighted, as shown with the colorful weight map. If you click the Weight Paint panel icon, you'll see all the deformers listed. So the first thing to weight is the entire back of the head. Since you don't want it to be affected by any deformations, we'll pick a deformer that doesn't move, such as the head null. You can easily select this deformer in the alphabetical list, but if you don't know the deformer's name, you can use the Pick tool to select the deformer directly in the viewport. Once you select it, use the Solo tool to isolate that deformer so that you see only its weight map. We've enabled symmetry here to save time. Don't forget to smooth the weights by holding the Alt key to create some nice fall off around the border. Next, let's weight each ear to its deformer, which is usually close to the ear control. Make sure that you toggle off symmetry before start painting these weight maps, or else both ears will be assigned to a single deformer. The last area to adjust is the tip of the nose. Right now when you move the nose tip control, the nose wiggles around too much. That's because this area is actually weighted to the nose pivot deformer, which is located too close to it. The problem here is that the nose deformers didn't get placed well, probably because there were differences in the zombie's eye to nose ratio compared to typical human proportions. A quick way to fix this is to first temporarily mute the head's envelope operator. Then move the nose deformers to the desired location. Update the reference pose for the envelope with the set reference pose command. And finally, Unmute the envelope operator. Now there's room between the tip of the nose and its pivot to allow a broader and more gradual weight map. As you keep tuning your head, you may encounter other situations that require some minor adjustments in the envelope weighting. For example, if a character needs to do some nostril flaring, you might want to weight these areas to ensure that they deform well. 
In any case, the general workflow for moving deformers and reweighting them is the same. Now that the envelope's properly weighted, it's time to tune the deform regions. As you've seen earlier, the face is split into different regions that control how the skin behaves as you create facial expressions by moving the animation controls. Some controls affect a single region, such as the ones that control your character's sneer expression, while others can influence multiple regions based on how you move them, like the inner brow controls that affect both the surprise and frown expressions. Regardless, all these regions are similar in the way you tune them, so let's use the inner eyebrow region as an example. Each deform region has options to adjust its deformation strength, its range, and weight falloff. So let's go to a frame that features a grumpy, frowning zombie. We're using this frowning expression because these animation controls have moved down, which causes the inner eyebrow regions to deform. Click the Paint button under Modify Region Falloff to get an idea of which vertices are affected by this region. In this case, you don't want the brow falloff to spill over to the other side, so you need to readjust its weight distribution so that it's more contained to its immediate region. Depending on the type of region you're tuning and the amount of tweaking required, it's sometimes simpler to erase the existing falloff map and then repaint it as you like. The strength setting is a deformation multiplier. You use it to amplify the region's deformation to match the expression you're aiming for. The range profile curve beneath it defines the deformation limits for that region. In other words, you can cap the maximum deformation value in order to better control the deformation range. This is a great way to prevent animators from breaking the rig when they push the deformations past their breaking point. You usually calibrate the deform region's range in tandem with the strength setting because they're complementary. You would start by moving the animation control to where you want the maximum deformation to be reached. Because the mocap on our zombie is driving this eyebrow control, it's already in its maximum position. Dial up the strength to a value that's high enough so that you can clearly see its contrast with the rest of the face. The y-axis of the graph is the percentage of the strength value, and the x-axis represents the range in which the region can deform. The smaller the range, the more quickly the deformation happens when you move the animation control. The first key on the curve is the region's zero deformation state where the animation control is in its neutral position, and the last key is the region's maximum deformation state, where the animation control is in its farthest position. The curve's shape determines how gradually the deformation change happens between these two states. Drag the last key to the left. The farther you move it, the more the deformation grows until it finally stabilizes. This means that the brow region's growth will be increasingly damped past this mark. You can right-click on the key and choose Key Properties to get accurate readings on its values. Now set the strength to a value that best represents the maximum deformation that you want for this region. You can adjust the curve's ease-in and ease-out by moving each key's tangent. To adjust the matching region on the other side of the face, you can copy and paste the tangents from one curve to the other. This region is now tuned so that animators can create their ideal expressions without having to move the animation controls to extreme positions. You can repeat this tuning process for other regions of the face as you need. Note that certain regions might be easier to tune using a denser mesh, so feel free to toggle between different subdivision levels as you work through this process.
Also, if a deformation is either too pronounced or unevenly distributed, you can always go back and update the region's falloff map. You may want to reset the animation controls on the ACT panel when you're done with that region. Another way to control how your face deforms is by using a wrinkle map, which is available from the Maps tab. A wrinkle map is like a mask that anchors down the areas you paint so that they are not affected by any deformations. The areas painted with a wrinkle map will contrast with the surrounding bulging areas, which essentially creates creases and folds in the face. Here we'll paint thin lines in the forehead and brow based on the edges that are modeled into the head. Now when the face deforms, any areas that are part of the wrinkle map will not bulge. Obviously, the denser the mesh, the finer the wrinkles can be. You can also paint wider areas, such as the mouth and nose, which help form the sneer crease. In the next video, we'll complete the tuning process with the jaw and eyelids, and then do a bit of sculpting.